Father God, bring your presence into our house right now, Lord. Invite them in right now as we just get together, amen, and just as give them a praise offering this evening, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah, church. How you doing tonight? If, you know, we're tuning in. You know, I just want to, you know, encourage you, you know, encourage you, you know, just so we can, uh, you know, get into the presence of God. But uh, for those know that I've been using a chair because of that sciatic nerve and believe me, it comes and goes. Amen. So if I call for a chair, don't worry about it. Amen. Pastor's just not being lazy. It just hurts. But uh, tonight, you know, I want to encourage you out there, you know, because I got some prayer requests, you know, that they. You know, I want to lift up tonight, amen. And how many of us know that prayer, you know, prayer becomes active, you know, when we all come together, amen. And, you know, all these prayer requests, you know, we got to understand that, that right now, you know, due through the circumstances of everything that's going on, prayer is what's going to make things move, amen. And my first prayer request that I want to lift up is Pastor Stella, amen. Enjoy her daughter, amen. Uh, Pastor Stella Reina, amen. Those are the founders of Living Word of Upland. And we want to continue to keep them up on our priority list. Keep, you know, moving and believing and trusting God. And then the second one is for Sister Deborah, her sons, you know, Freddie and Lorenzo. God already knows what he needs to do, you know, for healing and everything. And we're going to believe it, you know tonight and also we want to lift up my uncle my uncle Manuel uh, he just had I believe today brain surgery and they cut out a piece of his brain that it's where he talks amen and he might not be able to talk but you know we're gonna believe that he's gonna be able to talk amen but tonight you know we're gonna lift up all these prayer requests right before this service and if you can just join me in prayer tonight dear Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord tonight Lord you heard, Father God, right now these words, Father God, that we're lifting up these prayers, Father God. We're lifting up Pastor Stella and Pastor, Pastor Stella and her daughter Joy, Father God, and believing, Father God, for the healing miracle, Father God, that you do, Father God. And right now, Father God, we're coming in agreement, Father God. We also, Lord, are lifting up Lorenzo, Father God, and Freddie, Father God. You know, Father God, what that prayer request is, Father God, and we're going to believe tonight, Lord. And also, Father God, we're going to lift up Uncle Manuel, Father God, because we believe, Father God, that you will heal him in a mighty way, Father. But through it all, Lord Jesus, we give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's get up for the Lord tonight. And if I can't get the chair up, please. Amen. Oh, man. Amen. How many are ready for the word tonight? Yes, hallelujah. Okay, we got one out there. That's good. <laughs> oh, man. I just need a little uh, getting into place, amen. But, um, you know, tonight, you know, God has been tugging in my heart, you know, because how many of us believe, you know, that we have a call in our life, amen? amen. And we've been talking about it. But we got to understand that we truly got to believe it, amen? And um, if we believe it, you know, God is going to move in it, amen? amen? But he has to deal with certain things within our lives, amen? So that way things can begin to happen, amen? amen. Tell your neighbor, it's time to get right. Get right. If not, we're going to get left, amen? amen? No, not me. <laughs> you see, the Bible, we've been talking about... We talked about maybe about three weeks ago about, you know, uh, are we walking in humility, amen? If you truly believe that you are called, we, we talked about that we need to learn to walk in humility. But also, you know, when we're on that scripture, I didn't continue to go on it, but still today I want to talk about it because I believe that we need to understand that it is a real battle that we're going through, amen? Amen. But we talked about, you know, we need to walk. Are we walking in humility? But today I want to talk about, are we seeking God as well? And we got to understand when we seek God, he don't want us to be half-hearted. He wants us full-hearted. Tell your neighbor, we need to seek God with all our heart. Amen? Amen. So tonight I've entitled this, are you seeking God with a whole heart? Amen? 
And you can put the question mark there and you can figure it out. But in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that's what's going to be our main scripture, amen? It talked about, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Tell your neighbor, we need to be humble. Yeah. And then it says, and pray. And we also need to pray. Yes. And seek my face. We need to seek his face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight, Lord, for another day, Father God, another day that you have blessed us, Father God. I pray, Father God, that right now, Lord, that you continue to move by your spirit, Father God. Touch our hearts, Father God, wherever we're at, Father God. Maybe right now, Lord, there might be strongholds in our minds or anything that is keeping us of not being able to receive. I rebuke, Father God, any things that are not of you, Father God, as you can let us open our hearts, Father God, and let us be able to receive, Lord, what you're going to minister tonight, Lord. And right now, Father God, too, Lord, I pray that you decrease me, Father God, so you can continue to increase by your spirit, Lord, and just touch our hearts, Father God, in a mighty way, Lord, but through it all, Lord Jesus. Jesus to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. And in Jesus' name, the church says, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus tonight. Man, I needed to tune that up, amen. So now we're talking about if my people who are called as children of God, you know, we say we are his children. So we got to understand that if we're truly called, we need to serve God with a full heart. Amen. But my question to you this evening is, are you seeking God or are you still seeking self? Amen. And that's something that we really need to understand because a lot of the times we'll come to the things of God all broken, all messed up, all beat up with the feet up. Amen. Coming in with one shoe in. But at the end, God begins to do things within our lives and then we start forgetting about what we truly first came. And you know, my thing is like this, you know, we'll come, we'll start serving him. We'll start saying, hey, hallelujah, praise God, I'm here, Lord. But then we tend to forget what he's done in our lives. And we're not seeking God no more with a full heart, but only half-hearted, amen? amen? Tell your neighbor tonight, that's it. I'm not serving them half-hearted. I'm serving them all the way, amen? So now, as we've been talking about seeking, you see the definition to seek means to go search out, to look for, or to hunger. What is your hunger this evening, amen? Is it the word of God, or is it still our hunger of what our life is going to amount to? Right now, you know, through all the... The, the chaos and all the stuff that's going on around the world. Either you're going to end up seeking God more. Or you're still going to be trying to save your life. Amen. Because the Bible says to save your life is to lose your life. But to lose your life for my sake is to save it. It's not, it don't take a rocket scientist to understand that. But he's saying, if you are called and you are my child, understand, humble yourself and pray and seek my face and turn away from your wicked ways. It's given us an opportunity to ask God to come into our lives. Amen. I give you my heart, Lord. You know what, Lord? When I came, I came up beat up from the feet up. But now tonight, Lord, I believe, Father God, that if I give you my whole heart, then you can begin to do these things and heal my land with all my people that are out there. But I truly believe and trust you. Amen. But are we seeking God is my question again to you. You see, when you seek, tell your neighbor, it means you're going to hunger. Amen. Amen. An example, you know, when you're hungry, what are you all up in the refrigerator? Amen. Seeking on what you can eat. Amen. Right. And if someone took your yogurt or something, oh man, everything's going to break loose. Well, that's the same thing. When we seek God, we need to have an appetite. What is your appetite tonight? Is it just partial? I just want to seek you a little bit, God. I only want a little bit of you to come in. Well, like I did share with the home, okay? What you put in is what you're going to get. If you put in a little, 
you get a little. Tell your neighbor, if you put a little, you get a little. If you put a lot, you get a lot. And if you put nothing in, you get nothing. Amen? You see, as children of God, we need to understand that we need to seek God with all our heart. Amen? Not half-hearted Christians, but be full-hearted Christians to do everything that, he, that he's called us to do. Right now, it's opportunities. Amen? It's opportunities that we can roar right now in like a lion, amen, the lion of God or the tribe of Judah to continue to move, amen, to bring people to hope. Because tell your neighbor, there's a lot of people without hope out there. <clears throat> amen? You see, we have to have this kind of hunger for God. We have to seek him and what he desires for our life, amen? Amen? Tell your neighbor, it's not what we desire, it's what he desires, amen? Yeah. And sometimes it's going to hurt. When it comes down to seeking the desires of God, amen, I'm going to tell you, you know, Paul understood it all the way to his death. That, hey, it wasn't his will no more to be done. It was the will that God had placed him here on this earth. It's the same thing with us, you know, that if we're called by God, we have to understand that it's not our will no more, but God's will to be done, amen, in through our lives. Tonight, are you being a, a ready vessel? Amen? And I'm not talking about a kiss, a ready vessel, but a ready vessel, Amen? You see, Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. And I'm talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're not hungering for the word of God, then you're not being filled. But tell your neighbor, but by yourself. You be filled by yourself or but about only about you. Amen. There's no God. There's no more God in your life. It's only you. You're the one playing God. And that's what we got to understand. That we need to seek God and say, Lord, here is my heart. I give it all to you. Amen. I'm tired of sick and tired of living the life that I live. Never amounting to nothing. Lord, I'm here. Use me, Lord, in a mighty way. Because like the scripture said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Tonight, are we thirsting for that righteousness? Amen? Amen. You see, blessings follow after you hunger for God. In other words, revival will follow after you hunger for God. Is there a revival in your heart right now? Are you being stirred up by the Spirit? Amen? Or are you still remaining the same? The victimized, you know, the poor little me, amen, nothing's happening. No, there should be a revival. There should be a stirring up in your spirit right now when there's opportunity, amen. There's opportunity that you can share the gospel, give people hope what our true divine purpose is here on this earth. Amen. Could I get a clap emojis tonight? Yes, you see, hunger is a sign of health in our physical bodies. If you don't eat, what happens? You die. Well, spiritual hunger is a sign of a healthy spirit. Is your spirit hungry for the things of God or is it still hungry for the things of the world? The Bible says that the world leads to destruction. Amen. If your hunger is to have things still in this world, it's a life to destruction. But if your hunger is for the things of the Holy Spirit, believe me, man, you're going to receive all the fruits that God has called you to be walking in the Spirit, understanding the love, kindness, patience, and everything that comes with it. Amen. Or is it still the, the hunger of the world that brings rage, anger, amen, all the fruits of the flesh, amen? You can read those in Galatians. I believe they're there. But now let's keep moving on. In Deuteronomy 8.3 says, He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone. So tell your neighbor, sorry, we can't just live off of subways, amen? Yeah. But every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord... That's what we need to hunger for, amen. 
Tonight, I believe that we need to start acting like Christians now and start hungering for the word. Amen. Even in just in the aspect that, you know, we have service here tonight. Are we tuning in? You know, like I said, you know, when we should be, we should be sharing. We should be tuning in, especially if you're a part of this church. Don't just tune in later on. You know, if you're here, you know, okay, if, if, if you're really hungry for the things of God, you're going to be tuning in no matter what situation it is and what's going on. I'm going to say, no, I need to get fed with my manna. Amen. Amen. But now, how do we know we are hungry for God? Just look at your neighbor real slow. Amen. <laughs> You'll be able to tell. You see, this is how you'll know in Acts uh, 242 47 says the fellowship and of the believers it goes they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to the fellowship tell their neighbor they devoted themselves are you devoted for God tonight to the breaking of bread and to prayer everyone was filled with the awe and the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles all the believers were together and had everything in common. Do you have everything in common with your, even with your pastor here? Do you have those things? Are you, are you seeking them just like your pastor? You got to understand these things. These are the passion that we should start being developed within our lives. So we can understand that, hey, wait a minute. These are the teachings of God. I'm not going to miss out. I'm not going to let the devil rob me. From it, hey, if I got a Facebook channel, I'm tuning in. Amen. Amen. Or are we being robbed? Oh, I just tune in later. I maybe just hear a couple of little words. You know what he's ever he's gonna minister, give him a like and hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. No, we need to be tuning in. Yeah. If you're hungry for God. If not, go ahead. Do that. It's all right. Make sure you give a couple likes, amen. You see. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold properties, possessions to give anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Tell your neighbor, is your heart sincere tonight? And then it goes on, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. I want to ask you tonight. Is anybody being saved by you daily? Are you bringing someone to the Lord on a daily basis? I'm going to tell you right now there's a lot of people dying through the COVID-19 that don't know the Lord. And I'm going to tell you right now people are starting to come and read their Bibles when they're in there. Don't wait for that time to be yours, amen? Don't allow the enemy to wait into a situation like that for you to start getting right, amen? You need to understand that, that, hey, this is not a game. This is real. We just talked about revelation because the Bible said, for those who have ears, let them hear. If you have ears and you're not hearing, then there's something going on. It's not, you're not serving God with the full heart, Amen? Man, it's getting quiet in this holy place. Amen. Tell your neighbor, pastor is preaching the truth tonight. Yeah. You see, when all these are taking place, this is a sign of a healthy church. This is a sign of revival. Amen. There needs to be a revival within our lives. Amen. This is the sign when things begin to happen. Amen. You see. In verse uh, 42, it says, they love to spend time in God's presence. Do you love to spend time in God's presence? Amen. Opportunity is, are you tuning in or are you tuning out? What is it? Amen. You know, like I talked about the church at the beginning start when we started. Man, the church was packed. It was fully there like saying, oh, pastor. Man, you don't even know. And now, you know, people are, are, are calling and saying, man, that's messed up that they're taking it away. But hey, where is your hunger? You got to understand, I'm not going to lose my spot. Amen. And not if you're going to lose your spot, you're going to end up losing everything. Amen. 
So now, where do you love to spend your time? Is it in the presence of God or is it in your own presence? You see, another one would be, we will do anything or go anywhere to meet with God. Amen? Amen. It might just mean to tune in tonight. Amen? If you know we're having service tonight, if you know that this is your church, hey, tune in. Let it be known, hey, we're here, we're live, okay? I'll bring the presence of the Lord in my house. I don't care what's going on, but I'm going to bring them in. But that's the way we need to be having that hunger within ourselves. You see, if you're hungry for God, you are willing to sacrifice anything that is out there. Amen. You're going to give it all to God with your full heart. Amen. 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 Also, you see, when you have hunger for God, you have hunger to meet with other Christians. Amen. That's in our fellowship. Amen. Amen. We show we're disciples by our love for fellow, for fellow Christians, amen, in spite of what's going on in my life. But you know what? I know that I need to come to the house of refuge, amen, to be able to receive what God has for me. I'm going to receive what comes out of that pulpit, amen, and I'm going to get ready because why? I'm coming to the house of refuge where my other brothers and sisters are there, amen, struggling through the same thing that we're going through, amen. But I'm there, amen, even if I have a good day or a bad day, I'm still there because I know that every day that I serve with God is always good. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a clap offering. You see, when you lose your appetite for the world, we had a hunger for sin. Amen. Sin meaning the world. See, when you lose your appetite for the world, it was the sin that was keeping you away. You see, in, in 1 John 2.15, it says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see, if things of the world is more important to you, the love of the Father is not in him, it says. And then also, another one is, we are joyful for the things of God. When there's a hunger in us, we're going to be joyful. Amen. We will live a joyful life regardless of what is happening around us. Amen. Yes, amen. And tell your neighbor, man, you know what? The enemy, man, always tries to get me down. Amen. But I'm not going to allow him. I'm not going to allow him to rob my joy. Amen. amen. Because even though over the circumstance I have no control over it. But my God, I serve a mighty God that has the control that we man. The enemy don't even want to mess with me. So I rebuke you, Satan, out of my life. And I truly believe because God is with me. I'm a child of the Most High. Amen. Even though that I got to go through the suffering and the circumstances right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because I'm going to remain standing firm in the place. Amen. Because I know that God has something bigger on the other side of this circumstance. Amen. amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Amen. You see, so now that we're getting there, how do we stir up the hunger inside of us? Hallelujah. Praise God. I see all them emojis. Amen. Might only be one. Amen. But someone at least was, is listening. Amen. That's all that matters. Well, how are we going to stir it up? Amen. How do we stir up the hunger inside of us? Amen. Amen. How do you do it? You serve God with a whole heart. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we can't serve God with a half heart. Because if we serve God with a half heart, like pastor says, what we put in is what we get. If we put in a little, half-hearted, we're only going to get half the stuff. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I used to be out in the world, I used to love to get everything that I could. And then when I came to serve God, that's the same thing. I didn't want to settle for less, amen. I wanted to get everything that God had for me of all what the devil had stolen from me. I was ready to fight, amen. I was ready to say, okay, Lord, I got to stay here. Humble myself. I know that I've been called and now I'm here to seek your face, amen. And that's what I'm doing. But I had to turn from my wicked ways. Amen. Tell your neighbor, turn from your wicked ways. So now, serving God with a whole heart, 
Tell your neighbor, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to serve him with all our heart. Amen. Amen. And 1 Chronicles 28, 9 says, As for you, my son Solomon, it says, Know the God of your fathers and serve him with a whole heart and a willing mind. We got to understand that if we're going to serve God, with a whole heart, our mind got to be willing. You see, when our mind's not willing, we can't serve God with a whole heart. You see, because our mind, it's what's going to control us to do what we're going to do. Either I'm going to do it all the way, or I'm not going to do it all the way. Amen. Amen? So it says, and a willing mind, for the Lord searches all hearts. Tell your neighbor, that's what God searches. Amen. All the heart. Not who you claim to say you are. Amen? God don't search for that. He don't look at the outer appearance about you. Oh, yes, I'm holy. Amen? You're walking around holy. I'm holy. The only thing that's holy is your two socks. Amen? In the front. Your big toe. <laughs> you see, God searches the heart. And he says and understands every intent of the thoughts. So God already knows what you're thinking. If you seek him, he says he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be rejected. I don't know if you feel like that about me or about yourself tonight. But do you want to be rejected? Man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and then it goes like this in Hebrews the meaning of the heart means the mist amen the innermost hidden parts of anything if you try to find out where the heart is it's way in there amen it's hidden but then God wants all of us, all of his leaders to serve him with a whole heart how many believe that you've been called as a leader in your household? Mm -hmm. As a leader wherever you're at, amen? we all been called to be leaders. Mm -hmm. You see, in Mark uh, 12, 30, Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Jesus did not say, Love the Lord your God with just a little bit of your heart. He says, Love him with all your heart. Are you loving God this evening with all your heart? Yeah. You see, God it said, and this in Deuteronomy 10, 12 said, God said like this, and now, O Israel, what does the Lord, Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul. Amen. Yeah. That means if you're a child, if you believe that you've been called again and you've been chosen, then you need to understand that if we're not doing this, if we're not serving them wholeheartedly, then we need to change that. Amen. You see, why must we serve God with all our hearts? I'm going to give the points real fast and we're going to get going. Amen. We serve God. We must serve God with all our hearts. One. Because God already searches our hearts. If it's for him or it's not for him. Many of us have the opportunity. And that's what the opportunity is. God's going to look at our hearts. Not who we say we are. But who God says we are. Amen. And that's what we got to understand. That it's a real battle. Amen. It's a real battle because God already knows what's in our heart. And Jeremiah 17 says, says, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. I don't know about you, but I don't need things in my life that is going to, you know, mess me up to receive what God has for my life. Amen. I'm going to continue to fulfill what God has called me to do. Amen. Because remember, I want to receive. And then it goes on. God knows if you're serving him with a pure heart. Are we serving with him tonight with a pure heart? You see, we can witness. 
We can preach the gospel. Amen. We can teach and even pray for the lost. But what benefit will it do us if we have the spots in our hearts? Amen. Can you mute it? And then it goes on. It is the fullness of God that we will be released through our life. Amen. If you want the full benefits, amen. I don't know about you, but how many want the full benefits, amen? amen. If we want the fullness of God to be released through our lives, then we have to serve Him with all our hearts, amen? You see, it is us as the people of God, the responsibility to maintain a pure heart before God, amen? All right, guys, we're almost done. You see, God knows if you're serving them with a pure heart tonight. Amen. So we need to remain with a pure heart before God. James said, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, leaders, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And that's on James 4.8. You see, each leader is the guard in charge of the storehouse of his own heart. It's full either of good or bad treasures. What kind of treasures are you carrying tonight? Are they good or are they bad? But everyone has those storehouse, amen, that you're storing in your heart. You see, in the history of Israel, many storehouses were full of grain, wine, oil, and weapons were the benefit of the, uh, what was it, the protection of the people. Both Solomon and Hezekiah were very proud of the wealth in their storehouse, amen? And it's in 1 Kings 9.10. But he also made buildings to store the harvest of grain, new wine, and oil. You see, in the same way, a leader must ask himself, if he is proud of the content of the storehouse of his heart. Are you proud tonight of what's being stored in your storehouse? Are you proud tonight that you can say hallelujah, praise God. I'm giving it all to God, amen. You know, it, it, it was funny because, well, I'm not saying funny, but just for an example, right? Someone was talking about, you know, the tithes and offering, amen. It says, well, in the, in the Old Testament, you bring your tithes into the storehouse. But it's in the Old Testament. But it said in the New Testament, it doesn't talk about giving the 10%. I says, no, yeah, you're right. But in the New Testament, what it talks about is to give it all your best. You see, 10% is only a fraction of the minimum. When you give it your all, amen, you're giving abundantly. And God said, give abundantly. Don't give 10%. That's just minimal. I don't know if you want to receive bigger things, amen, then you need to start giving abundantly. That's the way the kingdom of God will move. Amen. But many of us are stuck. Okay, well, no, we don't, we don't even want to give the 10. And we got to understand the church still got to move, amen? amen. There's still things that need to be paid, regardless if you're in it or not. If you're full-hearted, you're going to make sure, hey, every Monday, Pastor Mondo or pa Pastor Anna, they're here. It's a while. And, and today, I just want to wish my wife a uh, happy birthday, amen? It's her birthday today, amen? amen. We can give a clap off for you to her, amen? <laughs> Thanks for the best of amen? But then again... You know, we got to understand that we got to give it with a full heart. Yeah. So number one was God searches all the hearts. Amen. And then for number two, because God's favor will be upon you. Do you want God's favor tonight in your life? Amen. Then give it all. Stop being half-hearted. Give it all to him. Respond to your calling. Learn to humble yourself and learn to seek him. He will let you know. Right now, like I said, it ain't a time to be playing around. It's a time to start getting right with him, amen? Because your time might come. That it might be too late, amen? And don't wait because we have a lot of family members that are still stuck out in the world. And you know, the Bible also clearly states 
Those who are mine. There's some that the Bible says that ain't his as well. So, you know, you'll, you'll hear those ones that always want to come against the word of God. The doctrines. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, hopefully, man, we'll catch it at the end. Amen. But still, you know, you got to understand for those who are called, we know that we got right now service to do. Amen. It's opportunities to do what God has called us to do. Amen. And if you want God's favors to fall upon you, then you got to serve them with a full heart. Amen. You see, the blessings of God will be with you and your family and your ministry. You see, Luke 2.52 says, And Jesus grew in wisdom, in statue, in the favor with God. Amen. Here are some biblical examples of God's favor upon people who obey and follow God with all their hearts. In Genesis, it talked about Abel, when Abel brought all the stuff to him, and it's in Genesis 4 4. Then we got Nehemiah on 1 11. He gave his servant favor today, granting, you know, the presence of this man. Because Nehemiah was following God with a whole heart, was giving favor before the king. Amen. When he built the walls. And then in Psalms 5 12, it says, For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous, you surround them with your favor as with a shield. I don't know about you, but I can tell you this. That without God's favor, I don't have nothing. Amen. It's only God's favor that I'm able to have and sustain everything that he has blessed me with. And you know what? I won't turn it a day back. Amen. I'm glad that he opened my eyes. Amen. amen. Because I want his favor to continue in my life. Amen. And I'm going to speak it into existence for my family, for my children. Amen. For my friends out there, for my enemies, everybody that is out there, I still pray favor over their lives. Amen. amen. And then number three is we continue to serve God with all our hearts, you know, because you will find him. See, many people, because of sin, disobedience, stubbornness, amen, jealousy, pride, non-caring spirit, etc., have lost him. Luke 22, uh, it says Luke 2, 41 through 44, you'll be able to find him there. Amen? You see, if a Christian loses God, how can he really follow God's ways and find him? If you're not walking with God with a full heart, how can you find him? How can you say, you know, that you're with him, amen? You know, King Amaziah lost God in 2 Chronicles 25, 1 through 28, amen? And he did right in the sight of the Lord, yet not with a whole heart, amen? We can always do right. We can come to church. We can look holy. Amen. Maybe be right a little bit. But if our heart's not in it. We're not going to do what God has called us. Amen. And just with that guys. I'm going to go ahead and end with that. Amen. You know. But I'm going to tell you. A king. Amaziah. He lost everything. He lost his kingship. His anointing. His life. Amen. And his salvation. But And he lost Jesus, amen. amen. So now, if we can all stand tonight. So now, when we serve God with a full heart, we'll be able to find him. Jeremiah 29, 13, and 14 says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found by, the, by you, declares the Lord. Amen. amen. So you got to seek him tonight. you got to surrender your heart to him. Have to give it all. Amen. And I'm going to tell you like this again. You know, it's not a time to play. It's a time to get serious. This is not a book that we just read and just say, oh, hallelujah, praise God. I read that story. Okay. These are, no, this is a book of your life. Amen. This is of what we need to start responding as many men here that, that, that understand this doctrine. Amen. That it was placed in their lives, that they were able to move and still continue to move. Remember, it was 12 disciples that God used. And one turned his back. Amen. 
but still out of the 12, that now still to this day, the word of God is still moving powerful. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to clap. Let's clap for Jesus. He sees when we serve God with all of our hearts, he will let us enter into this most highly place and we will find him. He will search our hearts, amen, not our outer appearance, but our inner appearance, amen, and his favor will be upon us, and we will find him. So now tonight to you, church, I say, so we need to seek him with a whole heart, amen, and let's give it up for Jesus tonight, amen. But tonight, I'm going to change the course of the service and ask if there's anybody out there maybe tuning in and maybe don't know Jesus, but would want to dedicate their lives to the Lord. It's a simple prayer, but we just got to believe it. Amen. And believe it with all your heart. Amen. And understand that he died a brutal death for us. Amen. For us, the sinners that fall short of the glory. Amen. So we can repent and ask God for forgiveness. So that way we can be back in commune with him. Amen. And tune and align what would he has called us. But tonight, if you're out there, if you just want to join me in this prayer, just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I know you died for me as a sinner. Tonight, Lord, I want to accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you arose on the third day. And I believe that you sit at the right hand of the Father. Lord, come into my life tonight. Let me seek you from now on, Lord. Give me the power and the strength, Lord. And forgive me of all my sins, Lord. Tonight, Lord, I will continue to just praise you, God, and just give you my whole heart. In Jesus' mighty name we say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for the Lord tonight. And then tonight, we're going to go ahead and end. And we can all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight, Lord, for your word, Father God, for letting us understand, Father God, that when we serve you, Father God, we got to serve you with all our heart, Father God. Yes, Lord, I pray over the life of your people tonight, Lord, all of us that are here, Father God, that are able to receive, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you take our hearts, Father God, and just be fully surrendered to you, Lord. Touch our lives, Lord. Put healing, Father God, where the healing needs to be, Father God. But through it all, Lord Jesus, we continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' mighty name we say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it for the Lord tonight. Amen. And we are dismissed. Amen.